connect, there's going to be something that happens to you, a point of change. You want to use the right words, details, images. Um, it includes gestures and movements. Um, you know, as it says up there, like a dance, um, a poetry, a song, they can all tell a story, but it's not storytelling. Um, for those of you who have been up here acting, um, the difference between storytelling and acting or storytelling and reading your, your, your poem at Cafe Azteca next week is that you care about that person sitting in the front row. Uh, you know, there's a baby crying or a train going by. That is part of your storytelling. You need to connect to that. You need to recognize everything that's happening out there. And the great thing for me as a storyteller is I can tell the same story to you in a senior center and to 10 year olds because I'm recognizing my audience and changing the words, the length, right there on the fly. It's nothing I've memorized. It, it's my story so I know it um, inside me and I change it every time I tell it. There's no props or sets or puppets or anything. That's not what a good story is about. And the best way for me to show you how this works is to let you hear um, some stories. So first up is the a hot summer day. We're going to go swimming. We go to this train station and a train pulls into the station and one of the twins, Katie or Lisi, gets onto the train and suddenly Frau Kelly says, Oh, God in Himmel, that's a long train. I said, Oh no, Lisi's on that train. Or Katie, I don't know which. <coughs> Jump into the train. I said, Lisi, take a stab at it. Lisi, this is the wrong train. She goes, Oh my God, thank you so much. She jumps out of the train and the minute I start to put my right forward to hop off the train, bing, bong, detourlich, Lisi. <coughs> and now, I have an incredible sense of the open road that I don't want right now because this train is pulling out of the station, out of Munich Central Station, and I don't know where we are going, and I am I truly... And we walked down, we stood in line, and my mother's looking over shoulders and through elbows to see that bin with the big bird's cheek. And I knew she saw it because her eyes kind of glazed over, and when she was able to get into the store, she made a beeline for the bin. And she said to me, hold my waist, I'm going in. I said, what? Hold my waist, I'm gonna get a big one. <laughs> now my mother was going turkey diving. I looked around quick to make sure that I didn't know anybody. And she was not a big woman. And before I knew it, her feet were off the ground. <laughs> and then she said, I got one, pull me up. I said, what? <laughs> I got one, pull me up. <laughs> Attached to her hand was the largest I've ever seen in my life. It was the size of a small cow. It took two of us to drag it out, bring it over to the conveyor belt, plop it on, and there was this man. He was dressed in a long white coat. He had smudges all over his jacket, a scully cap, and back then, you could do this, he had what we called a stogie. It was a snub-nosed cigar, and he looked down at the bird and he said, ha, that's a big bird, lady, that's a big bird, and he slapped it like um, um, Storytelling. And you open the door into one of these side rooms, and there is your story taking place. And suddenly you're in this event again. Look down at your feet. Where are they? On a carpet, grass, beach, in a car? And look at, look at yourself. What a size. Now, and you might want to switch off um, who goes first, who goes second. Think of your story from it. You were telling sort of an event. All right, so um, I have a little Yorkshire Terrier. He's about this big, bigger than normal. But I was tie dyeing him one day, and <laughs> pink got on his hair and stuck up about this high. And my dad, he's not okay with like animal torture or whatnot. They didn't even let me get a hot glue gun because they were scared I was gonna glue the cat to the wall. Which I was like, that's ridiculous. I, I am 16. I think I know how to do this. But apparently I don't. So, anyways, so I was like, crap, this is not good. So I was like, soften the glow, take the dog for a walk with a couple of my friends on a nice summer day. 
but up on the street, there's two dogs, huge dogs that my little guy, he would attack in a second. He'd try to bite their head off, go for everything, just got to get a blow, you know? So, <laughs> he, so, I have the leash in my hand, I start walking, I see the black dog. He's waiting, sitting there patiently, eyeing him up. I go, oh crap. So I re reel the leash in, but as I do that, my hand, so close, it lets go. I'm like, oh God. So I go running. My friends are like, what is, what's going on? What's Rose doing? And I'm running. You go, 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 go. You gotta get him. I'm trying to like go for the NFL here. I gotta get this dog because I know he's gonna bite the black dog. And my dog's like, oh, a friend. Yay. Oh my God, let me get my toys. We're gonna be best friends forever. But my dog's like, you're going down. So I see him. I'm like, all right. So I go once. I slip, I fall, got mud all over my jeans, crap. All right, I'm like, okay, well, gotta keep my mention. Then I go again, he turns a corner like a dumbo. I slip again, got mud all on this side, got mud on my butt, looks like I pooped my pants. Like, Rufus, I'm gonna hurt you. So finally, I'm like, all right, I'm coming close, I'm coming close. I'm right on his tail, and I just jump on him. He goes, ah! and Then he tries to bite me, but save the day, not the dog in the arms, in which he's squirting around. But it was a good, good time in which who on pants, looking great, styling day. That's my story. Yeah. Yeah. That microphone didn't tie her down. Energy. I love the way she had the characters, like we really knew who the characters were. The dog, the... Yeah, I like the you know. dog. The dog had a character, like that guy. You must have a lot of conversations with him. He's really had a good character. <laughs> yep. Um, was there anything you wanted to ask about, like... What happened to the pink streak in the dog's hair? He was a punk. Yeah. Good. Yep. Why were you tie-dyeing your dog? Oh, okay. I wasn't actually tie-dyeing my dog. Oh, I wasn't actually tie-dyeing my dog. Um, I had kind of got in the middle of things, which is what he does. But I was tie-dyeing like, shirts and socks because I really wanted to tie-dye socks. But my friend said the feet would get colored. I was like, not going to happen. But it dropped uh, like a nice splash drop on his face. He, he just laughed at me like in a, your child way and was all, I'm still glad I haven't gotten you the hot glue gun, but. <laughs> the usual. Good. That's a good question. Yep. Have you ever done anything with a hot glue gun that your parents told you No, they think I'm like a nine-year-old. I have one secretly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. Can we give Rose another really hand of applause? I'm assessing your peers and counts um, in this. All, all homework is going to be verbal homework, so line up your listeners now, and we'll be in in two weeks. Thanks. Thank you very much.